The organ delivery just started this week, which was a big milestone for the church. What they did with the organ prior to us getting here is they disassembled the whole organ and then took it back to Italy and had it completely refurbished. Uh, that was including the guts and the pipes. So um, over the years, the pipes had really gotten old and beaten up because of the weather and temperature changes inside the cathedral because it didn't have air conditioning. So uh, it needed a lot of re restoration on it. It took uh, about uh, nearly two years in Italy to perform the work, but by the time we were done, the building was not ready to accept it. So uh, we shipped the organ parts and we had them stored here locally. And now we are moving the parts from the, from the warehouse to the building and starting to put them back in. They should be done this week, bringing all the organ pieces in and, and setting them inside the organ chambers. And then the pipes will probably start in about three weeks. There's a lot that goes together with the organ. There's several rooms even below in the undercroft that are blower rooms that suck in the air and then distribute the air. And then there's um, different chambers that compress the air and, and speed it up even. It's not just the pipes that do it, and there's a lot of electronics that go with it. And one of the things that I learned that I didn't know is there's a backup system to the organ because if one pipe misfires, you just lose that, that sound. Well, they actually have a digital backup to where it detects that that didn't fire and it puts in the, the sound digitally. One of the things uh, the diocese did was hire a sound consultant. All the quadrifoils, the stone on the walls, um, were all based on his recommendations to make the organ sound better. So the worst thing for an organ is glass because the sound will just leave the building. So on the quadrifoils, uh, we have the UV paper there, which makes it a little bit more comfortable in here, but it also has carbon fiber on the back side of that, that reflects the sound back into the building. And then the different stone that you see on the walls, it's all different size and beveled different angles. That's also to help with the sound of the organ. One of the things we did to have the organ tested was with your consultant is they brought in a ex-police officer with a shotgun and they did a shotgun test to see what the reverb was inside the building and it passed with flying colors. Well, the acoustic is very important because the building must be live. Uh, the sound produced by the pipe must flow into the building with warmth. And uh, so we need some reverberation for the, in the building. Not too much though, otherwise the sound becomes too confused, you know, it's not clear enough. So there must be a good balance between clearness and warmth, which is make you feel like the sound is coming from nowhere, you know, from not a specific place. So we designed the organ. Uh, along with uh, the building architects, Philip Johnson, and we were awarded the contract to install it. We built the organ originally for the Arboretum, and there was a large organ of five manuals, five keyboards, and when Dr. Schuller decided to build the Crystal Cathedral, then we were asked to move that organ into this building and to add a organ that he purchased from New York City. So the Azerite organ is a combination of two organs, so the old Rufati organ and an Aeolian skin organ from New York City. My father started the company in 1940 with two of his brothers. There were three original brothers. That's why the name is Fratelli Rufati, which means Rufati brothers. During this time, uh, it doesn't, the construction does not come to a halt, so we're doing a lot of work outside and in the baptistry and the chapel. What we've done is we've taken uh, plastic and put in zippers and air conditioning systems working in this time, so the building has a positive flow to it, so it pushes air out of the building, so dirt and dust doesn't come in like it used to because the outside air would push stuff in and uh, we keep everything sealed up so every time a worker leaves or comes into the building they pull the zipper back down and that keeps the airflow and keeps the dirt out of the, the sanctuary area. 
The Hazelwright organ has been a very important element of this Christ Cathedral transformation, and we've been blessed to have so many donors step forward to help with the funding of the refurbishment of the Hazelwright organ. We've raised about $2.9 million collectively for that refurbishment, for the storage of the organ, and then certainly the reinstallation. Not only that, but we've had donors step forth to help with the refurbishment of a second console that came into play as well, the Moeller console, and so that project is, is complete, and uh, we're very blessed to have a donor step forward to set up uh, maintenance endowment for the ongoing uh, maintenance of the organ uh, for years to come.